everybody! How's it going out there today? Not a first shoot video this time, it's sort of a Let's Play thing, but it's not really my normal Let's Play stuff. So, um, I've done some Nikki Case uh, videos in the past, um, talking about his little tools and stuff like that. So he came out with his more recent one about feedback loops. Um, so I was just going to go over it a little bit. Um, it's not really a game per se, so it's not like there's going to be like a Let's Play. You're not going to see many Let's Plays of this kind of a tool, because really it is a tool more than it is a game so in that in essence like so it's not like the whole um, media thing like we did with the last one where it has a narrative structure there's no real narrative structure the narrative comes from you so basically because here we got foxes and we got rabbits and uh, so this is an example and I'll show you some examples of what he has so basically the idea is is that you have these um, circles that symbolize certain things and they have impacts on one another um, in, in sort of a relationship kind of a thing. And he has this kind of open tool where you can kind of play around with it. So let's play with this particular loop. So here we have rabbits and foxes. So let's say there's an increase of rabbits. Boom! Hey, look at all these rabbits. They're multiplying. And then the fox is like, mmm, delicious rabbits. I eat all of them. And then, all the more fo then there's more foxes. Because, you know, rabbits and foxes both have reputations, which precede them about um, breeding and reproducing and stuff like that. So if there's delicious rabbits to eat, then the foxes can do what foxes do, and then there's more foxes, and then when there's more foxes, they eat more rabbits, and then less, and then less rabbits can do what they do, and then less foxes can eat rabbits, and then foxes can't do what they do because they can't eat rabbits and they're starving to death. So, um, so in essence, that's kind of what we have here. Um, right now, it looks like he says, P.S., this is not a Latka Volterra model. It's just an oscillator. So, in essence, he's, he's admitting that the program right now isn't really working as intended, I guess, because it's like, well, yeah, it's going up, and then it's going down, and then it's going up, and then it's going down. It's not really paying attention to the stuff in the circles. Um, currently, he does have stuff in the placeholder, so let's do some editing and stuff like that. So you can edit um, anything by clicking on it, and then it brings up, and you can't see this, I don't think, but it brings up a thing over on the right windows where I can change things, and I can go, hi, and rabbit, and I can change the color of the rabbits to be yellow rabbits, or purple rabbits, or red rabbits. But red rabbits are okay, I'm fine with that. Um, you can also select different amounts. But as he notes down here in his text thing that the, 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 the amount really doesn't impact things. So if like I put like there's like absolutely no rabbits and I click on over here on the foxes and I go, oh man, there's so many foxes and I play and then I go, look at these rabbits. And then it doesn't really take into account that like there isn't that many rabbits to begin with. So right now it's like even though the the amount of rabbits would have a positive impact on foxes if there's that many little rabbits to start with the the positive and the negative really wouldn't have an impact so i think he understands that and maybe in a future update if he's if he's going to continue to pursue this particular project having the amounts actually account for something would be nice because right now it's just a symbol like it it has no meaning or weight on the model. The only thing that really has weight on the model is the positive and the negative and the relationships. You could still do a lot of cool things with it and we'll go over that um, just now. But uh, so let's uh, move on from foxes and rabbits. Actually, let's um, let's do an example here of what you can kind of do. So let's say we want to make a, kind of a you know a network here. So it can draw a circle and it'll pop up a circle. And um, I'm going to turn it green and this is going to be grass, right? This is an example he kind of gave. Um, just so you can kind of understand how to use the tool before I go into what I did with it, which is going to be a lot of fun, and you're going to like it, I think, and I think he's going to like it because it's like it's something I held on to for a long time, and now the tool actually gave me a chance to actually talk about it, especially since it's kind of back in the news. Um, grass and rabbits. So grass, we're going to say, well, this relationship is kind of the same. So you draw lines in the direction of which you want it to go towards your circle and it's pretty cool it kind of understands it's like hey you want to go this direction now you can say positive and negative relationships 
So the more grass there is, the more rabbits there are going to be. But the more rabbits there are, the less grass there is. So it's going to be kind of this thing. So there's a tool over here where you can you can click on these uh, pluses and minus. You can click on the arrows basically and change them to um, an inverter or just kind of an enforcer. So it's like basically does the arrow change direction? So you go back to play mode and I say rabbits and that's less grass and then more gr and less grass. Less grass means less rabbits. More things like that. So you can kind of have some sort of feedback loop. Once again, the count really doesn't have much impact on things like that. But whoa, <laughs> this is actually getting intense really quick. <laughs> wow, this is an extreme oscillation. See, this is kind of the cool thing about this tool too. It's like you don't understand the behavior until you do it. Adding this thing seems to have made it so that the rabbit Every time grasses impacts rabbits, it impacts foxes, like to an extreme. So it's like oscillating to an extreme right now. And every time these arrows go in, another arrow is added to the mix. So once again, I don't know if that's expected behavior, but it's it's interesting. It actually makes you think about like the impacts of things on each other. And does it really behave like that, or did I just make the model wrong? <laughs> And I had to make that idea, that thought on myself when I was doing my own thing, which I'll go over later. So he gives two other examples, and I'll go over those really quick. Um, so let's go over that. Uh, loopy depression. Sure. So this one here, he's got doing things, anxiety. So it's sort of a, a possible system level expression why per depression and anxiety are not just comorbid, but mutually self-reinforcing. So basically there's depression, there's anxiety. In the middle he says, well, there's doing things, <clears throat> accepting mistakes, feeling good, um, has a negative impact, demotivation, um, sort of has this thing. I don't quite understand this myself quite yet, but let's see if we can understand it through this model as it moves. So let's say I do something. Let's, slow, let's stop, hold on. Let's slow things down a bit. So there's a slider at the bottom where you can kind of slow it down a bit and speed it up. So we're doing things, and doing things causes one to accept mistakes and feel good, which causes depression and anxiety to go down. But then there's demotivation and fear of mistakes, which has a negative impact on doing things. So doing things, when I started off by doing things, it actually looks like everything came out okay, but what happens if like I start with depression? Like here's depression, which gives a positive thing to that, and then you're not doing too many things, and then your acceptance of feeling good's going down, and then depression, anxiety go up. So interestingly, it's where you start on this model that impacts the. Um, the amount, which I never really knew before because I didn't really play with this one too much before recording. But I guess that's his point, is that if you're, if you, you know, if you start with depression and anxiety, if, if that is the thing that's at your core and you start on that, it sort of reinforces this loop of negativity. And, it, and it's a very real problem. Whereas if you start by like feeling good, and then we'll speed it up. <clears throat> so if you start by the positive things, like it, there's sort of this positive self-sustaining loop, where if, if you start with the negative things, then it's gonna have a negative impact in, in the loop. So let me stop for a second. What happens if we start with the orange stuff? So it looks like if you start with the demotivation and fear of mistakes and you know, according to this little thought of loop. Now, whether or not this is true or not, is un I can't really say like how accurate this model is. But it's an interesting thing to think about um, when dealing with this thing. It's like, like where you start with doing things and where you start with these. If you start on any of the orange and the red circles, it seems to have a negative impact on the model. Whereas if you start with the positive things, it does that. Now, this doesn't really go into the whole... Um, real medical issue of depression and anxiety I think like if it's a medical issue then yeah you're gonna start with those things because that it's part of 
like a person's psychological makeup. So that's going to have an issue and an impact. Um, whereas those who don't have to deal with it could feel free. Like if, if somebody who doesn't have depression or anxiety as a medical issue could choose to start by doing things and feeling good or choose to start by being not self-confident and having demotivation and kind of having this feedback loop happen. Um, but obviously things, loops can be broken and things can happen, but you know, people's tendencies tend to be the same. It's, 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 you can read way too much into it. It's a kind of a cool little thought experiment, but it really doesn't, I, I, like, the, um, like the oscillating model of the first one, one has to say, like, is it really a representation of what's going on, or is it just kind of how the model's working? Um, let's see. So let's go to his third example, which he's kind of trying to show that you could kind of make this interactive and try and make people think about how to do things. Because right now, here we have automation of jobs. The idea of this model is the automation of the, our job industry. So <clears throat> here we go. So here we have the, um, you see you increase automation, you increase profits, you increase tax revenue, but you're also increasing at the same time, people's, people are losing their jobs, frustration, and political unrest. So the, the question here is, is that how can we use this increased tax revenue in order to alleviate the problems down here? Um, some examples people gave were, um, um, so, so some examples that were given um, that uh, these are other people's examples. So, like, because he kind of showed other people's examples on how they solved this problem. One of them was like uh, education, and then one of them was like um, um, uh, job creation. And so, you can use your tax revenue um, to kind of do this kind of a thing and then say the tax revenue can go to there and then that will have a negative impact on and these things will have a negative uh, impact on um, so you switch uh, to the negatives Oops. let's get rid of this what goes here thing and then we're going to click here and then we're going to say less so these, this, we're using our tax revenue to create jobs in education. I don't know how you, use, how do you artificially create jobs when jobs are getting automated? That's another debate. Um, but that was the example that was given online. That was pretty cool. So I'm gonna let's start automating again. So automation comes in, profits go up, job losses and political unrest goes up. But education and job creation created by the tax revenue, um, basically. You know, STEMI the political unrest that would have occurred otherwise. So that's kind of the challenge thing and how you can kind of work with it. So it's an interesting tool to think about things and, and do these kind of things. So I made a joke one, by the way. So uh, let me let me go back and reset this one. I'll end it, I'll end this part one video of this kind of introduction to the tool um, with um, with uh, one of the joke ones I responded to him with. He didn't like it, but, you know, he's probably pretty busy. It's kind of funny. I thought it was funny, but let's see. So we're going to go back to automation. So here's our tax revenue. All right. So he says, how do we create this thing and, and we're going to do it? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll take our tax revenue. Um, and uh, see, if you draw a line to it, it doesn't go anywhere good. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. And I said, and I said, as the uh, as Trump's uh, campaign theme is, you can't always get what you want. Oh, whoops! Wait, hold on, stop. The joke is ruined. I did it wrong. This is what happens when you do it live. It's a positive impact on political unrest. There we go. Profits, tax revenue, goes to Trump golf trips, causes more political unrest. Automation cuts profits, increases tax revenue, goes to Trump's golf trips, increases political unrest. Uh, 
you can't always get what you want. I said, oh man, sometimes you get what you need. Anyways, that was part one. Um, I'm going to keep it short and um, do my next part because the next part is going to be its own video. I'm going to use this tool to kind of go over some cool systems. This is kind of an introduction if you kind of wanted to do your own thing. So you can like do erasing, you can move things around. You saw me use these tools. You know, you can erase things, you can move them around. Um, now the distance does have an impact on the model as you'll see later. Um, it increases the speed in which, you know, things happen between one and the other. So spacing is actually very important um, when trying to make these things as well. Um, so text, you can also create text. For some reason it's not really working when I record. I don't know why. But you can create your own little text boxes as well. And you can draw pencils, usually circles and lines. Uh, circles will give you circles. The lines will give you arrows in the direction from one place to the other where you draw it. Um, I don't know if there's any Easter eggs. I don't know if there is that you can draw other shapes. Let me try drawing a triangle. Nope, that didn't work. He's like, it's it's an enclosed polygon. Make a circle. Man, you're a shapist. I thought I knew you, man. I thought I knew you, man. You're such a shapist. Anyways, I'm going to get the hop out of here. Thank you very much for watching. So uh, next video right after this is going to be on the Supreme Court? Oh boy, here we go.